This lesson is about the invoice templates. Invoice templates is the layout of your invoice, how you're going to be sending it to the client, either way through regular mail or through email. Nowadays, we all do it to the, to the email, but maybe some of them still need to go out through a printed version or sometimes clients, although they get it through email, they still print it out. Where can we find it? We can find it under the admin section and finance accounting and invoicing. On the bottom portion, there's a section about the invoices. This section will go about the, the templates. We have another email uh, or it's lesson about the, the email messages. There's also additional invoice fields that you can be using, but we're not going to uh, discuss that one into detail. Uh, that's something that, uh, that we have not seen to be useful. But uh, again, I just want to mention that there's, there's something uh, that you can add there. Today it's about the invoice templates. As you can see, there's a, there's a couple of them in here. I'm cleaning that one up. There's a couple of system ones in there. There's a, all of them are active. That's the first one I quickly want to show you. I already opened up another screen uh, where I basically have a uh, invoice processing selected. And here's the invoice template. I'm going to show you a little bit later on how to get here. And as you can see, everything is in here is selectable. And I would always say that's confusing. So I'm going to, those standard ones, those ones that came with the system, I'm going to in inactivate them. Less selection, uh, less, uh, less uh, issues to make any errors. And the top one I'm going to inactivate too. The default right now, I can't uh, inactivate that one. I'm going to create, show you guys how to create a new one. And then we're going to make that the default. And we're going to inactivate this one as well. And I'll show you how that all pans out. The default in the system, that's something that we're going to use. And we're going to make a copy out of it. They're still basically based on how to mail uh, an, e an, uh, an invoice out with, uh, with the envelope, with the window in there. Left side, right side, or double window. I think the common standard is now built to on the left side. So I'm going to hover over that hamburger menu. Then we press copy. And then a second page opens up where it says already copy of the standard bill on the left side. And in this case, what we can just do, basically we make it as, and we usually call it with an underscore. And we call it, let's say, uh, default or standard invoice. I think that was a good word, standard invoice. We can remove this description. Of course, right away here, this is where we make it active. There's a section about the data formatting, uh, how to do it. It depends on which country you are, which formatting you use. Like you see, there's, there's several uh, options. But now this is, it would be American-based. It's the, the month, day, year. But it could also say that you say, okay, well, first the date, and then the month, and then the year. Same with the, with the time too. If you print the times on the invoice, uh, that would be the start and stop time. I don't think a lot of people will choose for that one. And also the number formatting, you can make it, okay, how does it look like? Is it the, the basically the American way or is it the European way? The same thing with the paper layout. Is it for the letter or is it the, the, the A4, the European setting? Uh, do you want to have this page, in the, this page, page numbers on there? I would say bottom right is the one that I like. Payment terms, you can already uh, put it on there by, uh, by default. It can also be generated by the, by the system and a part, the currency format and everything. There's an additional section here on the bottom, PDF uh, name format, and where you can uh, lay it, uh, say how the, the, the PDF name needs to be written. You can maybe say that you put in front here, maybe even the, the company name. So it's always uh, labeled as the correct invoice. And then we press save. Now, right now, what we did is that we just made a basic default settings of a invoice template and it will open up right away this particular page where you have all the details and where you can edit it. Uh, there's the top of the invoice, there's the header. And then it's also here the invoice body, you hover over it. There's the so-called the bottom of the invoice, there's a footage section. And then it's also at the end, you can see the bottom of the invoice, it's, it's here too, with a lot of detail. As you can see, you can click on it and then you can edit it. Let's go to this first section. Uh, we can do a little bit and then edit. And what I would like to do is always is here the primary logo. And here we can indeed in, enter the, the, the external uh, comments. We can also for the people that like to do it in HTML. And some of, of course, do, uh, do like the HTML version much better. You can quickly click on it and you can go into the HTML section and the edit it a little bit more with the knowledge that you have. You can easily change a little bit the padding, the, the pixels and colors and everything. 
But by default, this design section is, uh, is okay. And you have here the date, the invoice date, and it's, this is the payment terms where you said by default, it's the payment terms that, that you gave within that uh, client. And this is where you can basically add everything. Now the logo was something that I, I knew that wasn't really working. Here you have a whole bunch of options. And this, the last one is the one that you want to do is the insert the variable. And here is everything from the from auditors that you can pull in uh, that you can use as a configuration. Now, some of them you might not even be using. Um, and it all depends on, on what you have. Uh, your company variables. There's a couple of those ones. And then there's on the, the bottom is the or the location variables. From what I know, the logo should be in the miscellaneous variables. As you can see, we have the quote logo and the primary logo and the other logo. In this case, we can use the same quote logo that we had on the other places. And you just double click on it and it enters there. As you can see, a couple of spaces, uh, a couple of white spaces removed. I'm just going to add a couple of them more. And then we have everything over here. Um, here's a section about your company tax ID. There's some countries that require you to list it. There's also some countries that require you not to list it. So right now, I'm just going to leave it here. But if you just want to remove it, uh, it's an easy one to add again. You just basically select it all, or just put your cursor, the last one, and you just edit it. It's pretty simple on how to kind of edit it. I'm going to press OK. And that brings me back to the kind of the main page. I can edit all the, all the sections. In this case, I want to kind of see how this kind of pans out. As you can see over here, I still don't see the logo. It's still kind of a lot of like, like coding. I'm going to quickly get to this invoice body too, but I want to quickly see something else. So right now, we're just going to press save and close. Make sure that you don't forget it. Now you can see here in the list, there's my standard invoices active. Right now, I'm going to make this one as a default. And once I do this, I can make this other one inactive. See, so now we have one invoice here and we have the one active and nothing else. I'm going to quickly go to this other section. I'm going to show you that under uh, contract, there's items to invoice over here. That's how I got this, this section search. And it's going to be a separate lesson on how to do all of those kind of things. Uh, I created a quick chart that I can process as an invoice. And now when you go over here to, to invoice template, as you can see, now it's only the one available that we created right now. There's the button preview invoice. And this preview invoice will pull up a separate screen and we'll show you exactly how we have configured this particular invoice. As you can see, it still says black and white logo because that's the one that we, uh, we selected in this particular uh, company file. And over here, it's also the unknown company. It doesn't have too much uh, data. It's just unknown company and in the Netherlands. And here on the bottom, you should, do see a charge. This is where you see the date with the, with the dots, uh, depending on how you selected it. And of course, right now we are in a preview. And on the bottom here, this is where you can see how it comes all out. There's no invoice number because this is a preview. It's current uh, date of today. There's an invoice date range, uh, which I'm going to also remove. I don't, usually don't like it. And I'm going to quickly show you what you can do here in the item descriptions too. And to show it to you to how to make this one. There's also total billable hours, which is a nice one. Total uh, billable amount. That still depends on the, on the total billable amount before adjustments. Probably in this case, there was nothing adjusted. That's why nothing comes up. Usually I remove this one well. Taxes, and then still on the bottom, it's the detail list of the taxes in this case with the tax rate. So uh, let's go a couple of little uh, edits more. And then I think uh, we have a nice, nice view of this particular invoice. So I was on this page. We still have the, the standard invoice. I'll hover over the hamburger menu and we go to design. Again, we are in here, uh, here on the top of the invoice. I said, I don't want to have that uh, invoice date range. It's just the invoice date is perfectly fine. Select it all and I delete it. And now it's gone. Since it's a little table, you might be able to say, you know what, I'm going to change this one over and I'm going to enter this one here. And here it becomes a little bit tricky on how to do the layout. And that's usually where uh, sometimes a lot of times we need, uh, we need some HTML formatting. So that's again, uh, if you're handy with HTML, uh, use it. If not, then you have to kind of use this editor and kind of go with the format that, that, that's in there. 
if you like I said, if you really know how to work with HTML, then it might be even good to copy this code, go into a separate uh, HTML editor and take it from there. But I think that's a little bit too far uh, fit. Uh, this is usually how we go and we uh, we edit the content and we leave a little bit the the, the, the layout in place. Now in this section of the details of the invoice, the invoice body, they call it over here. As you can see, it has all kinds of line items for every kind of charge that you can do. I'm gonna go, go to edit here as well. I'm gonna edit this body. And then you can see these are all the ones that can be invoiced and can be displayed. That's the date, the item description, type, so there's some stuff that you can, okay, that's something that I just don't want to uh, display. Or there's something that you say, hey, I want to uh, label the text rate per line item, and then you can put it in there. Usually what we do is that the work type uh, is something that we have as active or and as a listed item. You can scroll it up and you can click on it. And then you make it display and you make it active or save. So now we have the work type, we have the rate, we have the quantity, we have the billable hours, we have the resource name, we have basically everything in there that we want. You can also decide to add the role as well. Then on the, the separate one, these are all the line items that you can have. This is how it would be displaying. In this case, you have the labor, depending on how you have it set up as what it needs to be listed, with the task and the ticket, the title, the, the, the title name, and the ticket number. Little thing that we usually do is that because it will list it over here, you can say, you know what, we first have the title and then we're going to edit it. And to make it a little bit more nicer, we're going to put a space there, space. And we can even put it in one row like that. So then it will all be in one nice row. Again, if you have the option over here, you can go to HTML and you can edit it more. But usually in the design feature, it works fine. Over here, you have even additional settings for this particular one. Uh, you can labor, uh, display the labor associated with recurring service contracts, fixed price contracts, how the, the unit of measure needs to be, and uh, even if it's the exceptions covered by contract or it's prepaid, a lot of default that you can put in here. I'm not gonna go into much detail, uh, uh, the additional detail, how to use all the settings. It's a lot of trial and error, how you wanna have it set up. Autodesk help file has great comments on how to, uh, to explain all those uh, sections. I'm just going to show you in general uh, where's the features and how you can make it a little bit nice and how to make it, for example, make it your way. This is kind of how we do it to make it on one line. Put a space, there's space, so you kind of uh, separate them out. And you can almost do the same thing too for the charge, because uh, in this case also you want to have the charge. Uh, right now there's only a ticket number, but maybe you only have a ticket charge uh, that you invoice and there's nothing else, then you still kind of want to know, okay, what from what ticket did it came? So here we're going to do two, charge name, ticket number, and in here also going to uh, take that variable and I'm going to say, give me the ticket, uh, the ticket number. There it is. Uh, oh, the ticket number was already there. We said the ticket title. Choose from the list. I'm going to look for the ticket title. Probably skipped over it. There it is, the ticket title. So we have the ticket title. I'll we'll do again space and space. And then we have the ticket number. In this case, even it could be a project name or a contract name. And now it's much more clear where this particular charge is coming from. So you can add a whole bunch of detail. Like I said, you have almost all fields available. And best practice, don't put too much detail in there or, because then your, your invoice becomes a whole book. And this is how you can kind of set it up. On the bottom of this invoice section is also there's a uh, do not roll up. So you have the uh, roll up that you can basically combine it automatically. Uh, let's say you have a whole bunch of labor from one particular resource. Uh, you can choose to have them line by line by every entry. You can also have it uh, decide to uh, roll it up by resource. So you can see lots and lots and lots of possibilities. We do so say do not roll up. But you might have one client that says that you have a lot of time entries that say, you know what, I just want to have a simple bill with one line item, how many hours you did, for example, in one month. You can make a copy of this particular standard invoice, change the setting for do not roll up to by, uh, by resource, for example, and then uh, save that template for this particular uh, company that you have, and then associate that template for that company that uh, only that company has this particular invoice. After you're done, always make sure that you press OK. 
And once it's safe and closed, we'll go back to the main page where we have the whole entire uh, invoice body. And again, also once you're here, uh, make sure that at the end you press save and close. And that's when we're done. And now we can basically see again in going to the uh, proof and post. We can click again here on process the invoice to see, okay, how does it look like? With the changes we made. Uh, the other uh, is kind of a, a, uh, a, yeah, a basic uh, default. This is the invoice preview. This is going to be the exact preview, how you're going to go, uh, how it goes up to the client. And now you can see over here on that particular chart. Now I have in here the ticket name and the test ticket. And now it's much more clear uh, who it is. Another option, for example, is that you also put behind here is the ticket contact name. Uh, if somebody maybe requested the charge, then you even know right away uh, which contact of that particular company was there. Those are all variables that you can put in there. Uh, lots and lots of possibilities. I think this is kind of in default using how you can use this, uh, this invoice template. Um, that gives you a good start to, uh, to play with it. Uh, make more copies where you feel like uh, that's good. I think uh, this is how you can set it up. And I think over time you will make maybe uh, slight changes where you say, okay, I'm going to change it. For example, in here we have the resource name. Uh, instead of having it as a separate column, you can also choose to put the resource name into the item description. It also depends, of course, if you use what you use to uh, transfer your invoices to your accounting uh, system. Uh, you also sometimes have to a little bit fiddle with that to make sure that all those columns that you have in your invoice are also actually in your uh, accounting system. QuickBooks, for example, has less columns, and that's why you might be wanting to choose some of those details go into the regular item description. That's all for this uh, lesson. If you have any questions, comments, please go to our Facebook page and leave a comment. Thank you.